inspired by freedom and that feeling of humanity those intelligence which belongs only to civilized people he at least don't look he at least don't look that the essential quality is of a perfect machine that is why I'm quite confident when I say that he is beyond any opposition presented by the German soldier and that the French soldier alone, animated by the horror and electrified by the love of his homeland, can successfully oppose him. The great amount of soldiers and officers' testimonies that we inherited from the Napoleonic era allows contemporary historians to rebuild the perception of the order that French soldiers developed, especially during the Russian campaign. The Grand Armée was not called that for no reason. Napoleon had gathered soldiers from all of the European countries except for Italy, and this is why it was nicknamed the Army of the French Nations. The core of that war was formed by 350,000 French, who thus made up about half of its total strength. The Army of the French Nations was an aggregate of European soldiers who, in the end, did not intermingle a lot. Each army corps comprised between one and three nations. This helped with the commands and minimized frictions. Napoleon would never have used the European characteristics of his army to arrange Moreover, the values of the enlisted troops, like the motivations and cultures, differs according to the origins of the soldiers. The French had the opportunity during the campaign to continue the proverb which goes, a friend in need is a friend indeed, and their friends were indeed much too. The French soldiers of the Grand Armée gave the perception of the order in the memoirs and correspondences. We can ask ourselves the following question. How did the French portray both their allies and their enemies? In my paper, I wrote about the perception of Germans, which can be considered as forced allies and forced natural allies. Today, I will have time to say only a few words about them, and I will focus my speech on the perception of the Russians during the campaign. So, I begin with the force. In 1807, Napoleon gave birth a new to Poland under the embryonic state of duty of our souls. The force hoped that Napoleon would help them to recreate all of their territory, which had been divided into Russian, Austrian, and Russian. That is why they massively enlisted at the site. The four of the six million inhabitants of the duchy supplied the army of the nation with 75,000 men, and Napoleon started to ask for the second war of Poland. The soldiers of the Grand Army were generally warmly welcomed by the Polish people at the beginning of the campaign, and the Poles helped French during the retreat as well. However, it is true that Napoleon could put on the Polish people's communication, it was not the case concerning the German devotion. It is striking for the 21st century reader to analyze the testimonies of Napoleon's soldiers about the Germans, who were then considered as a people incapable of making war. In 1812, Germany was, like Italy, divided into several wars, small vassal states, and some of its territories had also been annexed by France, or created from nothing to be governed by the Napoleonic. On the west, Napoleon had gathered the principalities in the confederation of the Rhine, of which he was a protector. They gave approximately 125,000 men who didn't be concerned by the war. Nevertheless, some French soldiers recognized the value of German soldiers 
Java format would be a good example. Since it didn't make any difference between French and German servers. <coughs> However, we can read in a lot of testimonies like that of Zafo Bourgogne, I quote. The German soldiers, who were very well and were left with nothing, were poor soldiers. Without the presence of the French, who are among them in small numbers, they would have thrown aside the weapon and run away. French got great expectation from Prussians too, but were betrayed by them. I think. Uh, the French did not understand that the national pride of Prussian people had been so deterred by the defeat of 1806. That they were waiting impatiently for weakness of Napoleon in France to take their revenge. For the French, the Prussian honor was to remain faithful to the oath and to fight at the side. Whereas, for the Prussians, the honor lies in the vengeance of the affront of 1807. In every possible means, the civilians joined the Prussian soldiers by refusing to give a shelter to the soldiers and by disposing them of their guns and for their money. So, the end of the Russian army is to be Napoleon. Napoleon's army had already fought against the Russian and defeated them. But the contacts between the French and the Russians had always been rejected, except perhaps the Russian. And the battlefields were not in Russia. In 1812, the Russians could make use of their territory, of which they defended the court by sacrificing the order that they set on fire. The change was significant. The Russian forces could be divided into three entities. Three entities. Soldiers from the regular army, Cossacks from irregular forces, and three convicts of Moscow. All considered by the French as barbarians. Unfortunately, we are running out of time and cannot dedicate a part to civilians. So, the regular army. As believed by Bertizen, becoming a soldier was, I quote, a blessing for the rich and serve. Better to rest, better to continue his service. He could get the work himself free after a certain number of years. In fact, with 25 years of service, the number of soldiers who became free men was pretty small. Napoleon soldiers recognized the mental and physical dispositions in the Russian soldiers who were used to endure hardships such as food privation, hard discipline, tiredness and culture. The Russian soldier became a perfect machine. And that perfect machine could be defeated only by the French. I quote Bertizen, electrified by the love for their homeland. As for Dr. Koch, who survived his capture in Russia and published his memoirs, he insisted on the difference between two value systems when he wrote that the Russian soldier was a fanatic, a fanatic willing by the fear and ignorance, more than by love, for glory or contempt for death. I continue quoting. Um, they strongly believe in the existence of another life and think they will prove to the world of it by dying for the country. Many of poor soldiers, French soldiers, do not share the comforting idea and face death with courage. But the regular army did not make a deep impression of French soldiers. They focused really on the irregular troops which terrorize them the Cossacks. Which battles were not the Cossacks' strong points? They were fighting by the harassment of the soldiers who had parted from, from the rest of the troop was more adapted to the situation. The French memorialists described them as if they were animals. The 
extension a swarm of cossacks was used a lot by was used a lot and Morgan proved to be very imaginative in his creation of the best theory. I quote um, this swarm of savages who out like wolves. Again, we were lucky for if the bear talking about his wounded Cossack had noticed that once of his kin were passing by so close, there is no doubt that he had one. Loads that he would. However, what struck the Morganites the most was the way in which the Cossacks made war. The French perceived them to lack courage as even when they outnumbered their enemy. The testimonies report that the Cossack, even dramatically numerous, never attacked attachments who resigned to defend themselves until they would die. In a letter written by Hugo, General of Artillery, on the 4th of January 1830, we can read uh, that the only enemies were under and court. I quote, we have to fight against hunger and most of all, of course, terrible enemies. The Cossacks got rich with the remains of all soldiers, but few to them, or the sound of a cannon were enough to anticipate the most numerous of their troops. The Cossacks also came to be compared as the Mahlouk of Egypt. Under the system of the official propaganda, Realized by the Putin and the Marshals, referred to the Cossack on the 2nd of November 1812. Um, in Piazma, Bertie said to me, We need to treat those numbers of Cossacks as we did in Egypt with the Arabs. After the sand desert came the desert of ice. On their arrival to Moscow, the Comets who had been freed by Count Rostochin to set the city on fire caused quite a stir. We can read them of this fact in several accounts. The text stressed the savagery of their appearance, but we need to remember that they just had, that they had just been released from harsh imprisonment. I quote uh, Hogan. The convicts all had very ugly faces they carried rifles pierced with forks. One of them had long grey hair hanging down right to his shoulders and a long, thick and white beard hanging down past his bed. Lastly, he was carrying a fork with cushions in the same way as election emerging from the water. Another text, our prisoner looked more than like a bear than like a man. And in fact, the image of bear was a sort of constant figure in the French perception of Russian, even if for soldiers preferred to visit other terms, such as savage or barbarian. These things have to be compared with the image of the French by Russian as seen yesterday, French outdoors and anti-Christians. To conclude, um, it was more accurate to refer to the army of the 20 nations rather than the Grand Army. When we see how much soldiers were aware of their belonging to a nation and of the human characteristics that derived from it, the French, both confident in their own value and in that of Napoleon, he who was the victor's emperor, um, believed they could count on the other European nations even if the sooner considered than by the inferior, the other European nations respected them, respected their out and joined the cause, and fought the Russian that they considered savage and barbarian. This was forgetting the previous war waged against this very nation until 1812, under a unique value. This was forgetting the desire of revenge and the motivations that ensued from it. The Polish were disappointed by Napoleon, who failed to make the country come back to life. The German people 
Someone desired the triumph of the Russians over Napoleon, and the Tsar called these people to the Patriotic War. In two decades, the confrontation of liberty. The French didn't defend the soil of the homeland anymore, a soil which had been attacked by the Koalist King in 1792-1793. But they formed a European coalition to defeat the Tsar on its own soil. The repopulation of the war was important. The Russian campaign, France, patriotic war for Russia. However, um, wasn't this war also, in spite of the public division within Napoleon's army, an early European construction in this grouping of the Western forces against the common enemy, Russia? When he grew together and led this army of 20 nations, did Napoleon participate in the restriction of the Russian territory out of Europe? Thank you, Sassila.